Where do we begin? Where do we begin? I learned somewhere around, I don't know, five-ish, six-ish, that Lawrence Frank is being fired, reassigned. And I'm like, great. Awesome. A locker room that's already in shambles. They're already, everybody's self-doubting. You've got your inspirational leader, Kevin Garnett, who can't talk after games, he doesn't know what to say. And now you're going to fire your top guy, the guy that you're paying $6 million to mentor a clueless coach is now gone in the middle of a 5-12 and 12 debacle in which you're losing games by 20 or, or not, not just losing, I shouldn't say losing, you're falling behind by 20 almost every night. That's how the night started. And fortunately for me, I was not able to watch the game live. But as I do from my office, I've got the phone. And, you know, hey, nice first quarter. All right. You know, and then there you go. Third quarter. Saying, this, is, this, this, this rant is not even going to be about the game. It really isn't. The game is well, exactly what we called it. We said that that Denver would, would smoke us. And they did. So... Um, and once again, we don't compete. Uh, Denver, the three-point line, once again, another team that gets the seven, three, seven for 18. Uh, I didn't even realize, I haven't been following the West too well, so I didn't realize Gallinari was out and hurt. Uh, so he didn't even play. Let's talk about, uh, let's talk about Timothy Mozgov. Timothy, whatever. Timothy, Timmy, Timmy Faye, Tina Faye, Moscow, whatever you want to say. Let's talk about the matchup between him and our center. Our center, who, by the way, is a first ballot, first ballot, Hall of Fame, first quarter player, did it again, came out and scored 10 points in the first quarter. Then he proceeded the rest of the way to put up a bucket, one, actually two points, and are you ready for this? Two rebounds. Two rebounds. How many did Tamafi, Timofey, Tofi, Tiffy, Tina Fey have? Two one day. Brooke Shields was out rebounded by a zero. The guy had a zero after Brooke's number. I would like to look. I would love. Uh, I know Elias. They've got a bunch of freaking knucklehead stats. I want to know in the history of the NBA when a starting center was out rebounded by a zero added to his number by the backup center of the other freaking team. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I bet you it's never happened. <laughs> And I got Brooke Lopez after the game in the post. I don't know if you watched the Yes post game. It was yeah, terrible if you do watch. But anyway, this was her. <laughs> the guy didn't pick his head up once. <laughs> it's on me. I don't have the energy. I mean, it was like he was crying. This is the locker room that I got. This is the locker room that I have in Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd is so far over his head. I mean, Lawrence Frank, uh, listen, I, obviously we don't know the inner, inner workings. Some There's reports that are saying that uh, Frank is talking bad about kid amongst around the league. I, I, I just don't. He doesn't strike me as that type of guy. I, what do I know? I don't know for sure, but he doesn't strike me as that type of guy. I know what's on Kid's resume. I, I was here when Kid got Scott fired. And I'm not saying that that wasn't warranted because there were reports that Scott was a little bit of a lazy coach, liked to golf more than he did prepare. So I get that. 
I didn't go crazy when Scott got fired, but he did get the, the Nets to two champions. He was tough. What I loved about Scott was after games, he never fluffed. Never fluffed. Always challenged his team. Told his team when they sucked. I like that part of it. Now, I'm not, I, again, I believed all the information that came out at the time that Scott was just not a hard worker, and you got to be. And when Frank took over the job, came out the gate, I think, if you recall, I think he won like 11 straight games. You know, Frank earned his keep. You know, he, he did a nice job. So when he came back here, you know, I was pretty excited because I, I think Frank has head coaching material. No no questioning his work ethic. I mean, the guy, to get where he's gotten with, with his background, phenomenal. And then here he is out of a job. Out of a job. He's a defensive guy. So without him tonight, well, the Nets, they did well. They had 111 points. I mean, the team stinks. They are awful. Kevin Garnett cannot repeat. He cannot play basketball any longer. He's done. He's, he's got, he had two points. Two. He had two points. The guy has got single digits, I think, and I think they said it was 11 or 12, maybe even more games, 14, I don't it, it, single digits every night. He's, the team stinks, and now they're playing, they've got, listen, they don't have talent, and they now they don't have confidence. They don't play a lick of defense. You know, you think the Knicks are coming in here wounded? I'm telling you right now, I hope I'm wrong. But I believe, I believe strongly that the Knicks are going to come into Barclays and they are at one point are going to have a 16 or 17 point lead on this team. I'm not saying it's going to end that way because the Knicks are atrocious as well. It'll probably be close in the end. But the Knicks will win this game. I think they're going to win by double digits. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Because first of all, Say what you want about Carmelo. He's a, he's he's got balls. He's got balls. He's got drive. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure who on our squad I, you can put in that category of hunger that he's got. And so do the listen. The Knicks are awful. They stink. But Felton's got a little got a little pizzazz to him. I like the rookie. What he's doing, Hardaway. He's got a little attitude to him. Of course, J.R. Smith's a, a clown, but he also again tough toughness. They are going to take 35 three-pointers. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if they make 15 of them. Because we cannot go. Again, I would earn, if I played the Nets every night, if I was in the NBA and I had the Nets every single night on the schedule, I would score 12 points a game against the Nets. Because I'd be open for, somebody's going to leave me open and I'm going to make, if I take 10 Threes, I'm going to make three of them. Four of them. So between 8 and 12 points, some some jackass like me, because the Nets don't know how to guard. They don't know how to play. Woodson's going to come in here. What a game play. He's a good, Woodson's a good head coach. I think he's he's going to get fired. He's going to, because, you know, the Nick owner is, is definitely a nut job. And, you know, they're 3-13, and 13, so they can't, they're not going to be able to tolerate it. But Woodson's going to put a game plan together, and this is going to save the Knicks season, this victory. And it's going to put a stamp on our official demise and our official retreat. And I believe if it's ugly, I believe if it's ugly Thursday, and I really believe it can be, that you will see something's got to go. How long are we going to try the J-Kid experiment? How long? What else is next? I mean, if you three games, if, according to reports, the first game he coached in Orlando, they had a big spat. I mean, really? What did you bring Frank in here for? You brought Frank in here to to be a yes guy? Did you bring him in here to to just agree with everything? I heard Mark Jackson's statements. I, I get it. You, yeah, you, you, the head coach's philosophy has to be the number one. But you brought in Lawrence. You brought. You insisted that Lawrence Frank come here. So you can't tell me you just wanted him to go in line. The guy's got seven, eight years of head coaching experience. You couldn't tell me that you just want him to go in line with whatever you're thinking. No. no. You're a great player. You're a great player, but that doesn't necessarily translate to being a great coach. 
And now that this guy's gone, yeah, I have to feel that some of the players can't be too pleased with him being gone. It, this is a mess. This is, as Jimmy Cole had said today, the worst, most embarrassing moment in our sports lives. And mine, no, not even close. There's nothing close to this. Nothing. And I've, I've, listen, Yankee fan, but don't forget, I'm 46. So I watched from 1982 until 1993, those 11 pathetic years, 12 pathetic years, where they were the laughing stock of baseball. I've been a net fan for 30 years. You go figure th those numbers out. How many years were they respectable? And how about Raiders? The Raiders are the, you know, it's, it's perfect that both my teams were black. Because there's a black cloud all over my NBA and football teams. My football team is, is hasn't been good. I can't even remember. It's been over a decade. And this, by far, is the most disgraceful, most embarrassing time in my sports life. I cannot even friggin' watch this team for five minutes. I can't. I have to now officially go to DVR only. And I'll watch... And this is crazy because I'm, I'm, I'm the type of guy that I'll go home and I'll watch the loss. They lose a game, I don't see it live, I'll go ahead and watch it because I love basketball. But what I, I can't watch this. I, this is not basketball. This is atrocious. This is every single guy on the floor just not committed to doing the right things defensively. I know Johnson's played well offensively, shooting the ball a little bit better. But it, this is just very hard to watch. It's intolerable. It's intolerable. It's, it's just not acceptable. And now the Knicks are coming into town. And God forbid, God forbid they light this place up like I think they're going to. I think the Knicks are looking at this as they rally and cry. Let's listen. Let's get back on the high beam here. We know we suck. We know we got issues. But this net team stinks they ain't gonna guard any one of us on the perimeter let's shoot them out of the gym i think that's i think that's gonna happen now if, listen they don't make their threes then it's a problem they got issues on the other end but folks i'm gonna tell you something this ship be sinking this ship be sinking as michael ray said many 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 moons ago on the other side of town this is a major problem kid is in over his head this is only going to get worse. This is a lottery team, folks. This is not a playoff team. I know Atlantic. I know the Atlantic's bad. You, every, everyone else is pointing out Atlantic. Well, oh, the, oh, yeah, they are. The Atlantic's bad. Yes, the Atlantic is bad. And guess who's one of the worst in the Atlantic? You got it. You got a team that's unathletic. You got a team that's slow. You have a team with no leadership. We traded for Kev the we traded for the castrated version of Kevin Garnett. He I don't know who he is. He had his balls removed. He is not the Kevin Garnett that was in the league for his sixteen or seventeen years or whatever it is. He is a shell. He's timid. He's defensively, he's a disgrace. Anyone can get around him. He scored two points he scored two points and then there's d well resting up that sprained ankle nowhere to be found no reports of him working out no reports of him getting better reevaluated d nil can't wait to have you back d nil to go five for 14 six turnovers you know three or four offensive uh, Miss Q's. Can't wait. Where is he going to get better? And on a night where the backup center zeroed the starting center in rebounds. Elias, please let me know the last time a backup center put 20 to the starting center's two. Now, you might say, well, Bob, that's got to well, talk about minutes. Because this backup, Timofey, Timofu, Tumafa, Tina Fey, whatever you call him, played 31 minutes and Brooke only played 21, so there was a 10-minute differential. But go ahead and find me a backup center to pull down 20 to the starting centers. Two. Brooklyn. 
we got a problem. Now, I'm, I, I don't I don't know what to say. I don't, I, I'm, I, I, I don't even like doing these anymore. I started doing these things, you know, a little bit of entertainment, more, more therapy for myself. I am aggravated beyond, beyond the realm of possibly explaining. I, I, I can't take this any longer. I cannot. I mean, I'm sitting. This is like, picture being a kid before Christmas. And you're expecting like a 52-inch TV, and you expect an Xbox, and and you wake up, and and the game of friggin' life is in a box, or or, or, or Scrabble. Picture that. Picture you. you this is this is me before opening tip, thinking what I and and then I open up a box of Scrabble, or Stratego. Or or whatever, think of those board games that you or, or a Ouija board. That's probably a better fit. This is a Ouija board I got. This is a friggin' Ouija board. What the hell is it? I I got coaches gone. I got cups uh, cupgate. I got D nil. That fat son of a that that lay that that can't stay healthy. I got a two rebound seven footer. I got the toughest player in NBA history that lost his balls. I got Pierce, who was big shot Pierce, the truth, who, who can't make a shot in the fourth quarter, who throws the ball away. I got Joe Johnson, who does disappearing acts regularly. He should be on the circuit in Vegas. This is what I got. I got a friggin' Ouija board. No to 52 inch. No to X, but I got a friggin' Ouija board. And now, the Knicks are coming to town. Oh boy, leave me alone.